Oh, there we go. You might even call straight away. Right, well, on we go. I'm going to have to get around the other side here, everyone. And Sebastian, you just tell me when you need to go into infrared. He's calling. I have never seen a lion get up that fast just to get walking. Whoa! Sorry, big tree. Ah, there are impala running in front of him. Elephants have made such a mess here. Okay, I'm going to turn off and we're going to listen to him call. Yeah. And again. Come on, do it again. Just listening. I wonder if he didn't hear a lion calling in the distance, and maybe that's why he got up looking for his brothers. He's in very fine condition. He's got a big fat belly. Fairly pathetic, my friend. Let's go. Still no good. <laughs> that was <laughs> that's the most disappointing lion roar I've ever heard. Apparently, he was doing the same call this morning. Now look here, we've come all the way out here to see you, we've spent the whole day expecting a, a great performance from you. If you arrive at La Scala in Italy and you have a performance like this from the leading tenor, you know, people are going to be disappointed, they're going to want their money back. You are that tenor, you must perform. And thank you for all of your encouragement to him to roar. We do need him desperately to do some roaring. Come on, fellow. So I think the agreement was this morning that this was a mfumo. Is that correct? I think that was the agreement. I haven't seen the other side of his face to see if his very large scar is still there. And I must say this camera is fantastic the way it picks up the light on him. And Eliza, you're wondering why he's alone. Male coalitions of lions, especially big ones of four, often split up Eliza. They will move around patrolling different parts of the territory. Often a coalition of four will almost split completely into two and two and they may join up from time to time, but will spend their lives almost exclusively apart. The Matimbas were a very good example of that. Um, but these guys, I don't, they haven't split up yet. They do seem to spend quite a lot of time apart, though. I don't think it's anything permanent. But he's calling to make contact with his brothers. really is not a very impressive rule. You know, Chris, he's not warning to warn anybody. He'll call to to um, to call somebody for territory, 
they do not roar to warn anything else. They don't roar for warning. That's really not the not the sort of idea. So they'll only ever roar in order to advertise their territory or to call their mates and say, here I am. Now, if you could just roar again, that would be wonderful. I have my recording device ready for him. See now he's just giving us a bit of a listen. He's listening to what's going on around him. I really don't think that. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Do it. This really is bizarre, it's weird. I'm just gonna have to call somebody in because Andrew wants to come here. Andrew, just come down in Parlour Road. Uh, he's on just off in Parlour Road. You'll get me visual from uh, Sandy Patch. Yeah, okay. We're going to put the infrared on now, everybody, so the colour's going to change slightly. Louise will then fiddle the colour in the final control, and you'll go from the sort of fairly uh, sickening green to black and white, which is much nicer. There we are. And we are now in black and white. Which is how it should be, of course. <laughs> Many of you saying I need to cut him some slack because he's just woken up and hasn't had his coffee yet. I'm not sure mainlining caffeine into this line would inspire him. But maybe. Maybe I'm being unfair, everybody. Certainly wouldn't be the first time. I still want him to call, though. At least his head's up. I suppose that's something, isn't it? <laughs> well, he's going to wait a long time, Carl. You say you think he's pondering the mysteries of life. Mm. And waiting for me. amazing. Carl, you say, is pondering the mysteries of life and wait, listening to see if I'll give the answers. I think he's going to wait a long time. I have no answers, Carl. Which he will shortly realise, no doubt. Um, there is somebody else coming to the sighting, so they may well put a light on him. 
Oh, and some of you are suggesting he may have a sore throat, and that's why his voice is a little off. I must say, I find the voice very smooth, very easy to listen to. It's just not very powerful at the moment. You know, normally a lion's a little bit like Joe Cocker. Powerful, gravelly voice, as opposed to, um, I don't know, Roy Orbison, I suppose, who was very powerful, but um, much less gravelly. Or Cliff Richard, who was very smooth, but not very powerful. This is the Cliff Richard of, of, of lions. <laughs> Hello, Cliff. That's the light from the other vehicle, everyone. I think it's quite fascinating how his tongue seems to have to work at the same time that his back foot scratches. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Poor fellow. He's unable to scratch and not lick at the same time. It's ridiculous. Louise says her dog does the same. I think my father's dog does the same. Oh, here we go. He's very itchy. I wonder if he isn't a bit mangy. Well, I would certainly hope not. All right, let's go across to Tristan. He's got something much smaller, but probably a lot more active. 